Hello, I'm Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, and today we're going to talk about MS, or multiple sclerosis. Now, MS is an autoimmune disease where the body's immune system loses its intelligence and begins to attack the protective covering around the nerves, which is called the myelin sheath. <clears throat> Some symptoms could be blurred or double vision, clumsiness, lack of coordination, loss of balance, tingling or tremors throughout the body, in the extremities, pins and needles, reduced sensation of touch, weakness in the arms or legs, muscle spasms, fatigue, cognitive problems. Bladder problems could also happen like excessive urination at night, leaking of the urine, or a persistent urge to urinate, even urinary retention. You could have slurred speech, difficulty swallowing, heaviness in the legs, numbness in the face or tongue, and <clears throat> even problems trying to raise your foot. So there's lots of symptoms there. Now, while there are instances where modern medicine must be used because pharmaceuticals are needed to treat a crisis or an acute condition, there's also many times where modern medicine can't offer enough remedies for the condition being treated. And a good example of this is with MS. This is true in both the prevention of it and its treatment. For example, Ayurveda can provide herbs which actually heal both the nerve tissue and the myelin sheath. Modern medicine has no such remedy for this. The pharmaceuticals they provide are aimed at toning down the immune system so it stops attacking the myelin sheath. This approach is lacking on two accounts. First, not much of an attempt is made to see what's causing the myelin, the myelin sheath to break down in the first place. And second, there are no medicines on the market which can heal the nerve or the myelin sheath. This is where Ayurveda can make a huge difference in the treatment of MS. But before any prescription is written, we have to first identify the HETU, or the underlying cause or causes of the disease, and then we give the treatment protocol. And the real truth is, with most diseases, there's many underlying causes. <clears throat> so let's look at some of the causes of MS. What are some of the things that could burn the myelin sheath? Well, for starters, aspartame, the artificial sweetener. It's one of the leading causes of MS because it's famous for burning the myelin sheath. Many people have had their MS miraculously go away when they stopped consuming aspartame. Next, monosodium glutamate, which is known as MSG. Glutamate is an amino acid, which is the neurotransmitter responsible for excitatory signals in the brain. However, its production in the body is tightly controlled because in excess, it's highly toxic to brain cells and can even cause them to die. Studies have been shown that MS patients have higher levels of glutamate in the cerebrospinal fluid during the relapses of their disease and elevated glutamate levels in some types of the MS brain lesions. Now, don't be fooled if MS isn't on the label of the food because it comes under several names like hydrolyzed vegetable protein, or autolyzed yeast, hydrolyzed yeast, yeast extract, soy extracts, protein isolate, soy protein isolate, whey protein isolate, maltodextrin, malt extract, sodium caseinate, modified food starch, and soy protein concentrate. So you can see it's found in a lot of the processed foods that we eat off the shelves. The next cause of MS are parasites Believe it or not, the ancient texts of Ayurveda listed various parasites that could actually eat the myelin sheath. And I personally have had several patients develop MS after going to an exotic island or a foreign country and begin to develop their MS symptoms after they came down with the parasite. Heavy metals is another big cause, and of those, mercury is the worst. Mercury is extremely hot and piercing, and it easily burns holes in the myelin sheath. And it's really responsible for a lot of the MS that we're seeing nowadays. <clears throat> now, you could find mercury in some immunizations still. Uh, it's always in the flu shot. Mercury silver dental fillings, certain species of fish, some types of air pollution, especially when the air pollution is coming from the coal-fired power plants. You could find it in household fluorescent lights and also thermostats. So be careful when you're handling the light bulbs and the thermostats. 
Gold mining also releases over 11 tons of mercury into the air each year because mercury is released when gold is heated to separate it from the ore. And it's been estimated by some environmental groups that old abandoned gold mines in California continue to release mercury, even though they've been closed for over 100 years. So it really hangs around. Low-fat diets is another big cause. I've had patients develop MS after they were following diets which were too low in fats, containing no milk, ghee, butter, or cholesterol. Remember this very important fact. The nerve tissue and the myelin sheath are made of cholesterol. So a diet too deficient in these fats can actually dry up the brain and shrivel up the nerve tissue. I've seen it in the pulses of some of our patients. And it's even worse if this low-fat diet is accompanied by intense aerobic exercising because aerobic exercise burns fat. Another cause of MS is rushing through the day, going to bed late, burning the candle at both ends because this aggravates vada. And inside the body, vada is the attribute of drying, too much drying. So if we have too much drying in the body, the nerve tissue could dry out as well. So we have to learn how to balance our vata. Electromagnetic radiation and electromagnetic frequencies known as EMRs and EMFs are also another source of uh, MS. Prana, the vital life force, the cosmic energy which permeates not only the universe, but is delivered to all of our organs and cells of our bodies, is composed of soma, agni, and marut. Soma is the vibration coming from the moon, Agni is the radiation from the sun's rays, and Marut is that element which governs the movement of Soma and Agni throughout our body. Now the EMRs and the EMFs from the Wi-Fi, cell phones, and computers mix in and pollute the prana because they're both found in the space element. And as it enters this point at the top of the head, that's where the prana enters, it's called the Adipati Marma point, at the top of the head, it follows the same path that the prana follows, which goes down the spine through the shashumna nadi, and from there outwards, it goes to the arms, legs, the organs, glands, and the entire cellular system. So now what happens, this polluted prana is being delivered throughout the whole body, wreaking havoc in its path. I once had a patient who developed MS after working under high tension wires all day long on her horse farm. Once we moved her horses away from the wires to another part of the farm, her MS totally cleared up. And it's been over 10 years now and it never came back. So now you can see that once you identify the underlying cause, then and only then can you begin the treatment. So depending on what we find in that particular patient, we give the remedies to either maybe clean the nerve tissue or kill the parasites, chelate the heavy metals, we teach the patients how to include good fats in their diets like ghee, milk, and other dairy products. We teach them about the three doshas, which are known as vata, pitta, and kapha, and how to keep them balanced. These three elements found outside our body in nature are soma, agni, and marut. But once they come inside the body, they're known as vata, pitta, and kapha. Now, since MS is an autoimmune disease, we also have to treat the various parts of the immune system which have lost their intelligence. And these three parts are the friendly bacteria in the gut, the liver, and the bone marrow. So first, we have to regrow the friendly bacteria using very high quality probiotics, yogurt, buttermilk, takra, we teach the patients how to make. We have to clean the liver from all the toxins it's taken over a lifetime. And using specific herbs, we cool down the heat in the liver and use other herbs to regenerate liver cells if they've been damaged by the cooking oils that are refined, like canola oil, sunflower, mustard seeds, safflower, margarine, Crisco, and even the cheap olive oils. Sometimes we have to give transdermal glutathione, coenzyme Q10, and alpha lipoic acid, which were all developed by my teacher and mentor, Vajirama Kant Mishra. These are based on food so that they retain their original pranic energy found in nature. In other words, they weren't synthetically made in a lab. Now these are three of the main antioxidants in the body responsible for quenching the free radicals that the environmental toxins cause. 
But in this modern era, since there's over 80,000 chemicals in the environment, and most of us are harboring hundreds of these toxins in our blood at any point in time, these antioxidants are always running low. And then we have herbs and foods which can clean the bone marrow, the third part of the immune system, where the immune system cells are born. And don't forget, lots of environmental toxins and pharmaceuticals make a beeline into your bone marrow. So in this modern age, most of us need to address this highly important tissue, since toxins sitting there can trigger autoimmune diseases like MS. And finally, one of the most important tools we have in the treatment of MS are the very exotic and wonderful herbs that Dr. Mishra was able to get from India for patients who have not only MS, but other demyelinating diseases as well. These amazing herbs can actually heal both the nerve tissue and its covering, the myelin sheath. And I'll never forget how excited I was when we finally got to unpack these herbs for the first time after waiting several years to bring them to America. I'll always be grateful to Vaidya Mishra for teaching me how to treat MS in the correct way and for going through all the trouble to source all the herbs from India that we use to treat the many underlying causes of MS in our patients. So I hope you found this information useful in your efforts to learn the best ways to treat MS, which is treating it from its root cause with highly effective herbs that can heal the delicate nerve tissue and the myelin sheath. Thank you.